Okay, so in this video, we are going to continue our discussion about um, about data collection. So in which uh, in this video, we are going to define um, the word data collection. So first, we will go to the types of data according to how they are represented. So we have first the definition for ungrouped data. So data which have been arranged in a systematic order are called raw data or ungrouped data. So they are just data collected and we just arrange them from uh, highest to lowest or from lowest to highest or ascending to descending order. So that is ungrouped data. For example, if um, we have the height of a certain person so we have for example we just have uh, three datas uh, five so we have 130 170 120 and 140 then we have 150 so all are in uh, centimeters so if we are going to arrange the two, this one in ascending order so from lowest to highest we have 120 130, 140, then 150, and 170. So this uh, this now is called ungrouped data. So we have an ungrouped data of the heights of a certain population or a certain group of people. Then we have also group data. So data presented in the form of frequency distribution. So for example, if you are going to have another set of data, so maybe we'll have, we just escape this PowerPoint. So we just keep the, then we will add a blank slide here. Okay, so let's just have the layout as blank. Okay, so if we are going to have and ungroup data so for example we have here the data uh, 120 130 150 160 then we have 175 we have 180 190 uh, 120 again 130 140 um, we have 160 Okay, so if we are going to have this one as group data, then we will be also tabulating the frequency or the frequency is the number of times a uh, certain uh, data is repeated. So for example, first we will um, make a column of this one. So we have from the lowest to the highest, so we have 120, then we have 130. So arrange from lowest to highest, so we have 160. Uh, 140 so we have 140 then 150 then 160 175 180 then we have 190 I uh, know we have we have 180 here so okay 190 okay so for uh, our 120 so we now have the frequency so 120 so we have let's just write this one in another color okay so how about this one okay. so for 120 we have one two so we have two so two so the frequency of the data 120 is two so because in our um data here with our um, data represented here so there are two 120s 130 so we have 1 2 so it's 2 then 150 so only 1 ah, no 140 first so 140 only 1 then we have 150 only 1 160 so we have 1 2 so only 1 and 175 so we have 1 180, 1, 190, 1. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So the total uh, frequency is 10. Then 
let's check that one if it is 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 just a 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so we have one here that is that tabulated okay so let's just switch this one first okay so we have one that is not tabulated okay so i believe 190 let's check so this is 10 so 120 we have 2 1 2 130 2 140 1 150 1 160 so we have 2 okay so sorry for that so this is 2 so we have a frequency or the total number of data is 11 so this now if we are going to tabulate that in terms of their frequency this now is called a group a group data okay so in grouping data so it is more uh, there is more than uh, just uh, grouping them in terms of the frequency so we have also intervals the class intervals the uh, the their cumulative frequency so there are more um, to this table than just uh, tabulating them by their uh, by the given data and the frequency but this is the very basic on grouping the data okay so we will uh, tackle that when we are uh, when we go to uh, the topic on how to represent our data so by uh, by this slide we are only going to have the difference between an group data and a group data okay so we are going to proceed so we have data collection so the first step in any investigation is the collection of data so the data may be collected for the whole population or for a sample only it is mostly collected on a sample basis so collection of data is very difficult job the investigator is the well-trained person who collects the statistical data the respondents are the person for, from whom the information is collected so data collection is the very first step in, in any investigation or, a, or in any a study so that is to collect the data so the data may be collected from the whole population or just a representative or a sample of that population so uh, the most common way to do that or the most common um, method of uh, to follow is just uh, the lay this sample only of the population because that is to make the the study uh, much um, shorter and not uh, not not that much uh, tedious to do so the collection of data is very difficult job so the uh, the researcher or the is uh, the is a, is a statistician must have an uh, well defined or must be well trained in the collection of data and the respondents also must be selected in such a way that there is no bias so therefore that the data collected cannot be um, doctored or cannot be changed okay so that is the uh, data collection we have factors to be considered before collection of data so first we have the object and the scope of the inquiry so if you are going to have your, your research so the data ma, the data to be collected must answer the problem the problem of your study or the scope of your study and also must be within the objectives of your study and its scope in the sources of information so the sources of information must be um, liable enough and it must it must not be biased or it must be unbiased then we have the quanti quantitative expression so the, the the way we are going to present the data or to collect the data then the techniques of data collection so what are the methods we are going to do is it uh, to interview survey form then through observation then the unit of collection so for example we are going to collect the height of a certain a certain population so we must um, 
have a uniform unit either it will be in centimeters meters feet inches so you must first establish those before uh, collecting any type of data you have methods of data collection so the selection of a method for collecting information must balance several concerns including resources must be available uh, must be available so you must know what are your resources and if those resources can be uh, uh, can be easily get or it is uh, available then the analysis and the and the reporting so you must know how to uh, what are the methods of analyzing this data that you are going to gather then is it relevant to the study and also the scale uh, the skill of the evaluator the skill of the um, statistician okay so we have sources of data so we have two sources of data we have the external sources and the internal sources so the external sources are uh, those who are, com uh, who are coming from many institutions and departments that have information about their regular functions for their own internal purposes. So when those informations are used in a survey, it's called internal sources data. So for example, social welfare societies, we have the um, uh, the so in our um, in the Philippines, we have the PSA or the the Philippines e Statistics um, Administration. So that is those data coming from those are called as internal sources uh, of data. So they are internal sources of data. Then we have external sources of data. So when the information is collected from outside the agencies, it's called external sources of data. So such type of data are either primarily or secondary so this type of information can be collected by census or sampling method by conducting survey so for example if we are going to get data outside the department or outside of a certain company you, are, you belong to a certain um, statistic company and you are going to get data from other um, sources so that is external sources the internal sources are within the company or within the 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 survey company or the statistical company that you belong to.